Hello randomies, this is your host Gizmo GX and welcome to another Draft League video where this time around we are taking on another one of IBA's Draft League that is hosted by none other than Slightly Salty. But first things first, I want to thank Salty for letting me partake in another of IBA's Draft Leagues. I've heard so many great things from the coaches themselves and that made me super excited to get on battling with everyone and see how far my skills can take me in terms of this tournament's format which I'll get on a little bit later. But as for those who don't know who I am, I was a part of IBA's first ever RCF Draft League, aka the Randomized Chaos Facility, which was really dope in my opinion. So if you guys haven't checked it out already, then go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a title card somewhere up here that links you directly to the playlist of that series. But anyways, back to the subject on hand. This draft leagues format that I'm a part of is going to be a doubles format, a format that I'm very not familiar with as I've never done double battles in a league like this, like such as IBA. So don't expect a lot from your boy. All right, <laughs> at least for the couple first couple weeks, because I'm just getting into doubles. Don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've already recorded this ep or this draft analysis by the time I've already done my first week one battle. <laughs> and let me just say that comment that I just said earlier speaks for itself. But that's without <laughs> things being without spoiling things. But I don't want to put any like spoiler alert, but like, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, you could take it all however you want. Whether I won or lost, take it however you want. But anyways, I'll definitely, in the coming weeks, I'm going to show that I am going to be constantly growing in the doubles format and getting accustomed to how the system works. So I'm going to learn a little bit late, but sometimes it's better late than never, as I always like to say. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on with the video and what the actual purpose of this draft analysis is video anyways so i'm first gonna before i even get to the mons that i drafted for this season i'm just gonna go real quick over the rules because i feel like that's a little bit a necessity so let's start with that and then we can go on to the draft analysis video or the draft analysis section of this video so let's go um real quick uh before i go ahead and get onto the rules themselves i just want to like implicitly or i think it's the word implicitly i just really want to really quick talk about the tiers in this draft that we can have that we could draft up from so there are six tiers in total one being the restricted tier followed by a g max tier and the remaining tiers are from tier called tier one all the way to four so those are the tiers that you need to be aware of and on the screen i think i'm just gonna put a little screenshot of what i have in my docs so again i could only have one mon that i could draft from this restricted tier one from the gmax tier and as for tier one i can only draft two tier two i can only draft three the same thing applies for tier three now as for tier four which, which seems to be a unique tier i can only draft one so keep this in mind because i'm gonna go a little bit well, i'm basically gonna talk about it again uh later on in the draft analysis section but anyways i thought i'd just do it here that way it goes into your head so by the time i get to the draft analysis it's already inside your head hopefully that makes sense but if it doesn't oh well so now let's go on to the rules so the first three rules are basically if you read them, rule one, rule two, and rule three, uh, this is the ones that I'm addressing. So what these rules, I'm not going to read them one by one, but essentially what it's saying is only the mons, only the mons that are drafted from the G max tier can only G max. They cannot be like, they cannot dynamax regularly. They can only G max. In other words, now as, uh, another, uh what these three rules also say is that and the mods that you drafted from your restricted tier cannot regularly dynamax so basically any mods that i drafted from the restricted tier let's say i don't know i want to say one mod that was restricted would be like dialga so if i drafted dialga i cannot regularly dynamax so that sucks now as for the other rule of the three that i was talking about as long as the mon that you have chosen or that you want to regularly dynamax with as long as it doesn't apply to either the gmax or the restricted tier they can dynamax regularly so that's what the first three rules are saying and that's that 
Now for the next three rules, because I like to combine them together because they are essentially like they apply to one another. Uh, they're just given in a separate rule. So four, five, and seven is just basically saying that the tournament is gonna be in a doubles format. You're gonna uh, bring in six mon and only register four per match. And uh, the one thing, the one way to guarantee that you win is that you must claim the best two out of three matches. Or in other words, you can claim two consecutive wins and just declare your W for that week. And also, all these matches are going to be set to level 50, and that's pretty much all that says up to rule number 7. So with that, we just covered the first 7 rules, technically 6, but I'm just saying 7 because that's how the screenshot is represented, and I don't want none of you guys to be like confused or anything of, yeah, pretty much that. So let's go with rule number eight. Now I'm not gonna combine anymore because these are kind of like uh, they have their own rule. They have their own like definition of what's not allowed. So I'm gonna go one by one, starting with rule number eight, where it says no duplicate items. I think this one's self-explanatory. Literally no duplicate items. So let's say I have a lefties on one mon, I cannot have a lefties on another mon, even though <laughs> we can only bring four of the six mons, right? Yeah, even then. We, of the six months that we bring into our week's match, they cannot have duplicate items whatsoever, regardless if even if we're just bringing four of those and none of those have duplicate items. So, yeah. So that's rule number eight. Now, rule number nine says no duplicate Pokemon. I un honestly, I don't understand. And if anyone from the IBA is actually currently watching this, let me know what rule number nine says. No duplicate Pokemon, same national dex number. I don't know what that means. I'm trying to think from the top of my head. I've been looking at these rules for a little bit now, now that I think about it, but I don't know what the rule number nine is pretty much saying, but I take it however you want to take it, I guess, because no duplicate my mons. I mean, it's a draft league. You're not going to have the same... Uh, mods you're gonna be bringing I guess the only thing I can think about is like saying oh I drafted Derudon on like on one specific tier and then I spit I like uh how would you say it I drafted G Max form in while well, in the G Max tier I mean that's the only thing I could think about but yeah Anyways, going on to rule number 10, no Oku moves allowed, so meaning there's no, you cannot bring in any moves to have a guaranteed Oko move, even though it has like a 30% accuracy, such as like Fissure, Guillotine, Horn Drill, no, that's not allowed, and that's what rule number 10 is saying. Going on to rule number 11, uh, 11 and 12 are kind of the same, just the difference is that in 11 you can have no uh pokemons that have abilities that trap your use or your opponent in place from switching out such as arena trap shadow tag you already know the deal now as for n rule number 12 is just saying no mon can have any evasive abilities meaning uh it doesn't increase their invasion in either weather or any way format shape or form those are banned and that's what rule number 12 says now as for rule number 13 I thought this one's a little bit interesting. Uh, bait and pass is allowed, but you can either bait and pass one stat, such as speed, or all other stats together, but not positively, not po but not positive speed plus another stat. So let's say, for example, I guess if you want to bait and pass or you use the move bait and pass, you could either bait and pass one or all others or all stats together, but you cannot do one stat and and another and bait and pass just those two stats so that's basically what this rule is saying if i were to set this into an example let's say i had some i don't know some club fable right and i for whatever reason i use ancient power and then increase all other stats and i could bait and pass because that abides for the first half of the rule that says all other stats together because that's what basically ancient power is an omni boost move which kind of ties into rule number 15. So Omni Boosting moves are allowed. So that's why I thought I included <laughs> in this explanation or example. But let's say for example, I had a Clefable. I'm just gonna keep it simple. And uh, let's say my Clefable could, well, it really can, but just theoretically, let's say it did use like Dragon Dance. It does positive speed and positive attack. Now, if I were to bait and pass, that'd be illegal. So I cannot do that. So that's my example for rule number 13. Again, everything was theoretical. It's not that it can or cannot do it. I'm just 
using it as an example but anyways going on to rule number 14 says moves with 30 percent chance to lower accuracy are bad this one i don't know what moves but i know that there are some moves that have a 30 percent chance of lowering your opponent's accuracy and those type of moves are banned don't know from the top of my head but well i guess we'll figure it out or not <laughs> but if you guys do know let me know in the comment section below but anyways going on to rule number 15 i kind of already explained it omni boosting moves such as like uh ancient power so those are allowed now going to the final rule that says pokemon do not have to have this battle ready symbol in order to compete for example transfer moves are allowed so in other words as long as your mon that you drafted and they could potentially use moves from like previous generations they're allowed that's all that's saying that they don't have to have that battle route symbols to make it sure that it's all legal and stuff. Nah, you're Gucci. That's all you need to know. So those are the 16, or should I say 15 rules, but according to the screenshot, 16 rules for this tournament. So with that being said, let's get on to the draft, my boys. Alrighty, so to give you a little bit of background into the during the time period of this draft, I was honestly like not in the right mindset to draft because I was in midterms during that week <laughs> so I really just picked mons that just came from memories and like what I saw in previous like double act like, like double formats like the championship matches like people would have like to get money from that that's where I base my information on and other than that I just look at the mon I would actually when it was my time to choose a mon I would just like scroll down and see like oh this pokemon looks dope let me draft them with no <laughs> with no special reasoning actually there's only one or two mons from my memory that i actually did consider it like using like a strategical reasoning behind it but other than that everything was just pure random to be honest with you so let's go on with round one now round one again i really had no idea what was happening with drafting this time around uh because everything was into tears so didn't really know what to expect so we started off with the restricted tier because i saw everyone else and i just followed down the ladder but later on i found out that i could have just drafted any mon in any tier as long as i didn't exhaust my options as i mentioned earlier uh i did say that i can pick only one uh mon from the restricted tier and then two from tier two i mean tier one and three for my tier two followed the same thing uh, for tier three. I could pick three more and tier four is only one more mod followed by the G max tier is only one more one mod I can draft as well. So yeah, I didn't know that I can pick anyone and mix and match as long as I didn't exhaust my options. But sadly, I didn't know that. But oh, well, we're going to work with what we got. So starting with round one, I drafted uh, Garatina for my restricted tier and I was like, yeah, let's draft garatina because why not i ghost dragon never used a garatina before sounds dope sweet i bring in garatina that's all there is to it <laughs> so <laughs> there's no real reasoning why i pick garatina aside from that now going into round two i this is where i started drafting all my tier one mods all the way to i exhausted all my options so i saw i went through the tier one list and i saw latias and I was like, you know, I got to draft Latias because she my girl. We we have a lot of memories back in Soul and Versus. So I said, why the heck not? Let's bring her back. Alice, baby, she is coming back for round two. Followed by let's go to round three because that's the only reason I have for round two. So in round three, typical answer, typical answer. Kind of the same reason for round two uh, is I ch decided to draft the Duraludon just for the fact that I just love my man. <laughs> <laughs> I should really start not drafting mons because I love them. But, you know, part of the reason I drafted them is because I see how powerful you can be in singles. That doesn't necessarily it transfers well into doubles, but still, Duraldon be Duraldon. And I'll do Duraldon moves. So that's that for round three. And all my tier mons, uh, all my tier one mons are gone. So now moving on to round four. And this is where I'm going to be choosing all all my tier two mons which consists of three which this is from round four all the way to six so start with round four i was going down the, the tier two list and i saw uh 
I was trying to see what type of mons were kind of dope to pick and I saw Mammal Swine. So that's who I decided to choose on round four because Mammal Swine, I saw Ice Shard, Powerness, Choice Bandit. I mean, I mean, I don't know what else can it do. Um, maybe I'll be very creative with the movesets and abilities. And I don't know, maybe like movesets, but I just knew Mammal Swine, just Mammal Swine, it will pull through somehow. So that's what I drafted for round four. Now going on to round five, I saw Entei and the reason why I chose Entei was because uh, for round five was because I thought it was dope. <laughs> uh, that's all I really can say about that one. Uh, Entei was cool. I had to draft him. Now going into round six, I at this point I started to see my team was kind of like having the dragon weakness. I was trying to have like a little more diversity to the team and I noticed I didn't have any water types. So I went through tier two and I saw Slowbro Galar or in other words, the a Galarian Slowbro. And I was just like, I gotta pick up my boy. I saw Rebel Trader use it in a previous doubles format. He used it pretty well and I thought to myself, maybe I could make use of it. So that's why I chose Slowbro, Slowbro for round six. Now going, so that's pretty much all my mons for tier two. And this leads up to almost the final half of this draft league going into round seven, where I started picking up all my tier three mons starting from seven all the way to nine. So with round seven on the way, I was just like, I have to choose something different. Maybe something people wouldn't use at this point. So I saw more Peko. Uh, no reasoning. I just thought Dark and Electric is a pretty cool typing and I just decided to draft him for tier 3. Now, going after round 7, 8 and 9 was kind of like, I started using my brain a little bit because I was like, okay, so I need a Mon that can not only just be good offensively, but as support as well. And that's where I saw Torcat. Uh, I'm gonna combine these two. So I decided to draft Torcat and Tisserina, but the order was, it kind of differentiated which one I was gonna draft one or the other. So I decided to go ahead and say, I'm gonna go ahead and draft to Serena for round eight for the reason that of its ability being queen queenly majestedly or something like that basically negates all priority moves from your opponent and i believe my side as well so i thought that was a pretty interesting ability so i decided to give it a little bit more priority over torah cat now as for round nine it was torah cat and it's not for the reason most people think because if it's like a premature incineroar i i just thought torah cat was torah cat and I saw it used in the battle battle tower <laughs> whenever I took it on in Sword and Shield. So I was like, Torakat seems like a liable option. So I brought Torakat along for round nine. So now those are all my tier three mods that I decided to draft. Now going on to round 10. Now this was like the final stretch and my tier four mods, I looked through the list, didn't see much, but honestly it, it made me think back to the chat early on on Discord. And I was talking about like, I was gonna draft Noctowl as, as a joke. I told people to not draft it. And, P and I, had some, I guess I felt like I had to be true to my words. So I drafted Noctowl for round 10 and that's the reason why I brought <laughs> Noctowl for or drafted Noctowl for round 10. Now going into round 11 which is the final one and this is my G-Max tier and I saw I was looking through the G-Max tier and I saw Alkarimi and I saw Goki draft I mean I, not Goki draft. I remember Goki in previous leagues he used Alkarimi and the G-Max pretty well and I saw that it could be viable and singles that didn't again that doesn't necessarily mean it transfers well into doubles but i just saw alchemy's potential and so i went ahead and decided to bring it along and make it part of the squad and that was the reason why i chose gmax thanks to gogi so shout outs to my boy and that's pretty much all my mods that i drafted for this season now i know it's a little bit of a quirky team it don't, may not have a lot of synergy whatsoever but i do not plan to swap out i kind of want to make myself go in a very difficult situation but again i could potentially come out on pretty good on in terms of outcomes i mean i did get pretty well in the rcf which again i did have a pretty much one-sided team and i still managed to pull out w's to say the least <laughs> but hopefully i could do that again in this uh, draft league but that doesn't necessarily mean it will because again there's a difference between singles and doubles and doubles takes a little bit more strategy which you'll see in my one in my week one video 
<clears throat> but anyways, so that's the end of this video. So if you guys enjoyed this draft analysis and enjoy the way I scripted this video a little bit, I mean, it might be a little flimsy, but this is my first ever scripted video. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been your host, Gizmo GX, and I'll see you later, randomies. Peace out.